I'm a big fan of Matt, so it's going to be hard, but... Uh, uh, Did all I right. say it all? <laughs> I like the way he lives his life. I'm proud of him. Growing up in a military family was, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was all I ever knew, really. So for me, it was all par for the course. My father was a career United States Marine. Uh, went into the Marine Corps right out of high school and put himself through college and eventually became a uh, fighter pilot for, for the USMC and uh, he's been flying jets his whole adult life. We were based mostly out of South Carolina, Beaufort, South Carolina. And from there we would deploy uh, either to the Western Pacific or go out in an aircraft carrier. It's, it's an exciting career and it was fun to watch him, watch him do all that. Uh, he was gone a lot, so uh, the time he was there we always enjoyed it and the time he was gone we would write letters and, and uh, take phone calls. He had about four different deployments where I stayed home and had the three kids and six, seven months at a time. But I had the support of the friends around. We didn't have family around. So we moved about 14 different times. So Matt was used to uh, moving a lot and making new friends and which he did a great job doing that. It all seemed normal because you lived amongst a bunch of people that all had the same situations. But we had a good family too. It, it was, uh, we all got along real well. We, we still do. Uh, that was always my goal. I guess my one goal was that it, no matter what happens at the end of this, we can all hang out and laugh and yuck it up. Then I'm, I'm declaring victory. I think my father's career inspired me in a way that it made me want to do something aggressive, something out there, and something bold. And that led me into construction and, and, and excavation. I always had it, I always enjoyed it. I always liked working uh, with my hands. I uh, went to school for geology and geophysics. And through that, one job led to another, and, and here I am. <laughs> this is the first utility that I've worked for, but I've always worked with utilities. I used to work at the city of Portland, and before that, uh, in commercial construction, and before that, hazardous materials, excavation, and transport. So I've always had a, a leg in the, in the excavation. At the end of the day, a lot of the work that we do ends in three-dimensional construction, and that has a very unique and uh, common uh, impact on a lot of the uh, groups that we work with in the cities. Now, the SURE project is a cast iron replacement program that's going to retire approximately 68 and a half miles of low pressure cast iron pipe throughout greater Portland and Westbrook and replace it with intermediate pressure uh, high density polyethylene pipe. The biggest concern people have when a project like this comes around is how is it going to impact me and uh, being a, a natural gas utility I, I think the concerns also uh, stem into safety and access loss of service everyone's under the pretense that this is being done because there's a safety hazard, which is not the case. Everyone needs to realize that this project is, is all about looking forward, not looking backward, and we're gonna do so in a very efficient way. I have a lot of pride with this project and, and my role here. The biggest challenge with, uh, with this line of work is bridging the gap between you know, the construction project and the efficiencies that, that are required by the job. And, and bridging that gap between a lot of the, the, the human element and the other special interests in the city. Being a liaison between those two entities has always been a challenge and it's always been an entertaining challenge for me. I, I've always enjoyed it and I love what I do. So obviously as a business owner here, I've been involved in watching this project from the start, from when they initially went to planning board in Portland and then to come and find out that Matt was the guy that was going to be the one that was going to be coordinating this major project. I was actually excited. I, I know Matt personally and his performance as a professional on the project just has represented Unitel very well. Yeah, to be honest with you, my take of Unitel before was just the bill that would show up every month and now there's a face, there's a personal face. It's Matt, it's Trish, it's, it's Joe, it's the guys that are out front working and now I have a greater respect for Unitel. What they're trying to provide in the service to our city. Uh, the work that's being done here is infrastructure that's gonna last well beyond my lifetime. 
So maybe when my son or my grandchild is running this business here, those pipes are still going to be functioning for them. I met Matt at uh, University of Southern Maine. Um, I was a freshman in college and he was a junior in college. One of the things ever since I had met Matt was that he had always had a drive for being in charge. <laughs> and he has always been a people person and he's always been great with people from all walks of life. So I think he has a natural ability to manage any situation. Without her, I don't think I'd, I'd be able to, I wouldn't be very successful at all because she really um, anchors me and brings me back to reality if I go off on a tangent. Uh, what, what Carrie does well is she keeps a lot of the details honed in where they need to be. She, she is the anchor of this house, that's for sure, and this, this house basically revolves and, and, and succeeds because she's in it. So whether it's uh, running kids from you know one school event to another or often you know she's working herself or, or you know helping out you know, around the house, uh, she really, everything centered around her. You know, Matt has always wanted to make his dad proud. And I think that he's always, you know, had that extra drive to say, you know, you weren't around a lot because you were in the military, but look at what I'm doing. I'm a family guy, I have a great career. And I think that his father really prides himself on that as well. When my children get older and they're out there, uh, stomping around the real world. I hope they carry some core values with them that I think are very important. And that list is ever changing, but I would hope that they, they, they treat others with respect and treat others as they would like to be treated themselves. I want them to be cautious and careful. There's a lot of dangers out there that they need to be aware of. You know, I hope they find time to enjoy the simple things as well. I think very often a lot of us uh, get so hyper-focused on the task at hand that you miss a lot of the pleasantries that are right under your nose. So I, I hope they I hope they're happy. I hope my kids grow up and be happy. That's my greatest wish for them.